So welcome to the show, Vinny and Andy. Yeah, thank you. Hi. So uh, Vinny, I'm guessing, is on the left and Andy is on the right, because those names could probably go either way, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. It, they're all nicknames, too. Like, our, our background uh, goes to, like, we're from Brazil originally, and I, I guess our names were too complicated <laughs> to go yeah. by the full name, so we just, both of us adopted, like, nicknames to make it a, easy. easy, you know, and, and friendly with everybody, so. Excellent. So um, since this is a show based around real estate, kind of tell me about um, the type of home you grew up in. Was it in Brazil, somewhere in Brazil? It was in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about where you grew up. So we are from the same city, actually, mm -hmm. in Brazil. So that was, that was good. Uh, and I was in the same neighborhood. I was in the same neighborhood. But like housing there, it's uh, a lot different, like from pretty much all the aspects of like when we first got here, we were surprised on first how fast they were building houses <laughs> and uh, and also the way, because here you see way more like uh, wood and Brazil is all bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. But we adapted very well. Like we feel like even though here is kind of a cold, we never, uh, we, we, we felt more cold in Brazil than here because brick house, no furnace system. Yeah. It would be like super chill inside. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. We are from the south of Brazil. Uh, it's cold in winter time. Some people think that Brazil is all hot, but you know, it's like here, every place you go is different. Gotcha. So you're saying that construction in Brazil was slower than construction here? Uh, just because I think that the process of building is yes. different, you know, like brick, the foundation, all, all this would take way more time when you're using like, uh, you know, uh, brick and cement than mm -hmm. when you do like, the way you do it. And then, so what's the primary heat source then? <laughs> uh, blanket and a nice <laughs> coat. <laughs> gotcha. So no central heat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, well, thank, no, you for, thank you guys for sharing about that. I just think it's great to kind of learn a little bit about where people grew up but because home, you know, home is where your heart is, right? So even though you're not in Brazil anymore, I know that we kind of go back into, you know, the house we grew up in and, and what it was like in our summers there. So, so tell me about Bequest Coffee. So Big Quest was a dream of uh, ours, like for a long time. We we have uh, extensive background in the coffee business, and we always wanted to open our own shop and a place to call ours and do the things that we always dream to do. And uh, last year, this dream finally came to be true. Uh, of course, we're not counting with the COVID, but we were very grateful that we could put everything from the paper into reality. And, and make it happen and um we are very grateful for all that we have today so yeah. how, how do you go about the whole planning of opening a coffee shop uh, you say you have that in your background but i mean there must be a whole lot a whole lot of things you learned in that process yeah yeah uh Vinny has uh, what more than five years working as a manager in a coffee shop and then i got probably like two years but we were always talking about that and we want to have our own and then happened actually really quick <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> we were looking for a place and then we found this location and we love it and yeah and i mean it was uh, the one thing that we always tell people when they ask us about this too we, we say like it, it was meant to be because there was mm -hmm. a, a lot of things that came in a way of uh we finally opened the shop like uh problems that would come up and uh at some point we've been like okay it's it's not it's not going to be it now you know but then things work out in a way that you know it was meant to be so like uh and that's what we kept telling ourselves even when the covid hit really hard it's like you know what it was meant to be this place to be our shop our first location so it, everything is going to work out fine you know like it's hard it's challenging but we, we're going to make it so uh, but it was a lot a lot of learning even though like the five years, like she said on the background and her two years too, we, uh, the first we thought we knew a lot, but then being the business owner for the first time, you definitely realize, whoa, there's a bunch of things too <laughs> that we do not know, you know? Unexpected. So tell me about the coffee or products that you serve. So you want to talk about like how you choose the coffee blend? Yeah, so uh, we always were passionate about coffee and good food. 
uh, cough, we're Brazilians, coffee is in our blood, I guess. And um, so one thing that we would face a lot here, it was every time they would go out to visit a new place and find a new spot, uh, it would be very hard for us to find a place where we could, that would be combined of a really good food and a really good coffee. It would be either, either or, right? So uh, the, when we always would talk and dream about our coffee shop, we would say like, whenever we open our shop, we got to find a way to combine both where a person can go. And if they want to, you know, if they're hungry, they can find both like a good coffee and food or if either or, but like, so about the coffee, we partner up with a middle fork roasters there in South Seattle. And I have known their work for a long time. They have been probably like 13 to 14 years already in their location roasting. They were primarily focused only on commercial. So they would work like with uh, the Google campus, uh, Facebook, uh, and big grocery stores. Uh, but because we know them, um, they accept to partner up with us as well. And they allow us to kind of create our own blend. And so they do the roasting, but is like a house blend. It's Big Quest coffee um, that you're going to find in, in your cup. So uh, it's a very well balanced, very rich, but not so acidic, and that go well any time of the day you're drinking. So, excellent, excellent. So, besides coffee, what do you serve? Yeah, then we have the homemade pastries. In the beginning, we start with a few, and then we saw how people really want that, and there's no other places in the area that serves like homemade croissants and turnovers and all the stuff. So we ended up adding like new uh, recipes so we have like I don't know maybe like 10 or 12 different kinds of croissants and turnovers that we make in house mm. and then we have the paninis that we have the whole day um, breakfast sandwiches and omelets in the morning that you can make your own choose what you like we make fresh wow and so it's all made there it's not pre -made. yeah oh, that's, yeah. that's cool we make everything in house, so it's always fresh. We bake many times a day the croissants. So every time you go there, at least one is like I still hot out of the oven. Awesome. And after COVID, uh, like the second shutdown, was well, the second or first one? I'm not sure. Uh, we also added the happy hour. So we have in the afternoon like beer and wine for who doesn't want to drink coffee. And we add a small menu with appetizers, everything homemade. How big of a space is it that you guys have there? So the whole space is about like uh, 1,800 square foot. Uh, but we have seating for like on full capacity, we could sit probably like 50 to 60. Okay. Hopefully we can get yeah. some, uh, some photos uh, from you guys and we can actually put those into the video. So overlay. So as we're talking about it, these, uh, the, the photos can kind of come up. Um, that'd be kind of cool um so tell me about what it was like to open this business and, and what happened how did you support the business for uh, the year while you were open and then closed and then open and then closed i think what made the difference is uh, we were there like every day in the beginning working like 12 hours a day every day maybe no day off so i don't remember no it was, was yeah it was it was hard, but fun at the same time, because we really love to be there. Mm -hmm. But we we never closed since we opened, uh, since we've, we had like two or three shutdowns, I think two. Uh, but we were open for takeout during the whole time. Yeah, because when we opened, we opened March 14th of 2020. Oh, and, yeah, and on March 16th, we got the news that the governor was like putting the, 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 the lockdown in place and and I mean, we just opened, we can't afford clothes. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, scary. yeah, let's just, you know, doing the, um, the takeout, like Candy said, like, let's keep our doors open. We kind of closed the, the, um, the dining area. So only the front uh, cashier was available with the pastry. So people were only allowed in the front part of the shop. Um, and it was scary because we were all on the Mill Creek town center. So there is a lot of business around us. Mm -hmm. and all of them were closed so we were right. like one open there so and then we were like we are yeah. like outlaws or something like <laughs> police are gonna come in here and shut us down like what's gonna happen you know yeah. um 
and like Andy would joke around, like the good thing is like every every time a car would stop by, we knew it was for us because yes. we were definitely business open, like so customer. Uh, <laughs> but that but that helped a lot because during this time we kind of built a reputation and we were very grateful for all the customers too because they would um, help us a lot with mm -hmm. the reviews. With the word of mouth was a big thing for us in the beginning, like. We would have new, more people coming up the next day say, oh, my neighbor told me about you mm -hmm. guys or my coworker on a Zoom meeting. Or, and, and, and that's how we start growing our, our name and our business and more and more people start coming up. And it became a big community place because we have people that hang out there that are neighbors, that are family. And, and you know, so I think that was the big point too about like the community really helped us during this time. So awesome. Uh, that's great. So um, what advice do you have for any first time uh, business owners? Uh, would it be don't open during a pandemic or open during a pandemic? <laughs> I think even if you have the pandemic or not, uh, the main thing is you really need to understand the business you have and be able to work there if you don't have it, like nobody else to do it for you. So if you are in a coffee shop business, make sure you really know about coffee and how to make it. Mm -hmm. Because then if something happened, even if you don't plan to be there every day, like we planned, um, you can still you know, survive until you find someone that you can trust and be there for you. So I think it doesn't yeah. matter what you open, you need to know to do all the things like how to do other things yeah and being passionate about what you do too that makes mm -hmm. a huge difference people can notice that from the moment that they step into your place rather than a big branch of some sort that you know they, there is a random you know employee there when you see the owners there and you see the passion they really see that what you're doing is important you know like you're not just serving a cup of coffee for a person you are putting in all your passion and your love to there and, and kind of uh creating some kind of relationship too you know like sometimes like you, the one thing that always amazes us about the coffee business is like sometimes we are the first person that this customer is going to see in the on the, the day so like your interaction with them might make that the, the person's day go better or worse right so like mm -hmm. Uh, so it's a very important task and it's nice to interact with people at this time and coffee creates this kind of a relationship. So being passionate, this is a, it's the most important thing, I guess. Yeah. And it, and it shows as, as the owner of the business showing up in the day to day, it shows that it's not just a coffee shop, but that it has something to do with, with the passion that, that you bring uh, for coffee and, and that gathering place. I mean, just hearing Andy talk about, you know, the, the pastry side and the coffee, you know, it, it, it's an intention, right? And customers pick up on that. It's it what brings them back because you know, there's a lot of competition in the coffee market, right? I mean, a lot of competition. So uh, do, you, do you guys have plans to expand? Yeah. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. That's that's our whole goal. I mean, from the beginning, we always wanted to have more than like the one location. Uh, of course, school would happen and we always we have to put a, like a few extra times like time on our planning but we do uh, have plans to expand yes okay and your location again is in mill creek in the mill creek uh center the town the, center, the town center yeah. yes town center mm -hmm. okay excellent um do you have any promotions for anybody watching or listening to this podcast yeah of course i mean for uh everybody watching or listening to if they want to stop the whole week at the coffee shop tell us, like like we said we're always there so <laughs> they can tell us that they watch it or, or heard about this and they can get out like a 10 percent off on any like a whole bill on their whole bill okay awesome well listen Vinny, andy i certainly appreciate it just for those of you listening it's on main street five uh one five one one main street unit 105 i'm pretty sure there's a bequest coffee sign out front yeah. yes sir <laughs> awesome thank you guys so much for coming on we really appreciate it yeah, appreciate yeah, your time. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. Um, so anybody else finishing up? These are the great kinds of interviews we want to do. If you know somebody that has a small business or lives, works, and serves folks on, in anywhere on the east side, we would love an opportunity to feature their business. So please uh, reach out to us. Now, before we go, I, I want to just uh, bring up some statistics because I thought I kind of bring it back to kind of tell you guys what we're seeing um, right now on a nationwide kind of uh, um, uh, 
um, nationwide statistics, we're actually literally seeing more real estate agents enter the market than listings. That's like a crazy statistic, meaning more people are getting into the business than listings are coming onto the market. So if that isn't an indication of we need two things, less realtors and more listings. So if you know of listings, let me know. Um, just kind of a, a joke there. But also on the east side, what we showed this last week, we showed 296 homes come on the market and 529 go pending. So it's almost, it's not quite a two to one ratio, but just the market is so incredibly hot. So um, anybody watching, listening, we know we've been kind of saying the same thing. Who do you know that's thinking of selling? Now coupling our ready to sell program and then go out and support Request Coffee. If you find yourself in Mill Creek and you have a hankering for a pastry and coffee, swing in. If it's happy hour, I'm sure they'd be happy to have you. Thanks guys for coming on and thank you all for watching the show.